In this video, we are talking the time signature track, the tempo track, and we'll take a quick look at the time warp tool. I've got these tracks already in here. I've got this selected. You can see in our inspector here. Let's go ahead and create some more time signatures. Easiest way, I think, hold down the Alt or Option key. You get your pencil tool, click, you got a new time signature, text field entry, type it in, and there you go. You can move this around, whatever you need to do. This will update to show you the current time signature that is active. If I move the project cursor over, notice it moves to 3-4. You can adjust items over here as well, double-clicking. I can enter a new bar, for example. I could modify my time signature accordingly as well. If you don't like it, once it's selected, hit the leader backspace and it's gone. You have a nice feature here that's open the process bars, and this is pretty powerful, actually. And what you've got here, your double bars and your bar range indicate the end of your project. This little column, green column here, indicates the start within this area and the length. You can see as I drag this up and down, this changes, and of course it would move across thusly. So let's bring it down to one bar just for kicks. What happens depends on what's over here in the menu, the action menu, insert bars. So you're going to have bar 49, I want to insert a bar, I want a time signature of 4-4. This is adjustable. You can delete bars. Bam, at bar 49, I want to take out a bar. No time signature here now. We can go down to reinterpret bars. This is actually a pretty sophisticated little process they have here. And it says, hey, you're in 3-4 and you want to change this to 4-4. I'm going to change the look of the notes. The performance doesn't change, but the look of the notes does to accommodate the new time signature. And lastly, excuse me, let's go back up here. Replace bars. It just says, I'm going to just blast through and make this 4-4. And these colors change over here, by the way, especially delete bars. It's red. And insert bars. It's green. Just a little color-coded. We won't process anything. We'll go ahead and close this out, but that's how that works. Let's move on up to the tempo track. And one reason I wanted to do this together is that you can edit your time signatures across this lane right here in the tempo track editor. And we'll get back into that in a moment. So within your tempo track, you have a toggle on and off, basically. And, and by the way, this is the same as we go down here. We're in track mode. We're in fixed back in. So these things are, are redundant in that respect. See, we have our inspector information over here. You can click on these, double click on these, do a text field entry to modify these as well. But basically, you've got this track up here and you've got nodes. And what happens when you enter those nodes is based on how you have it set here. Let's put it to jump. I'm going to go ahead and put some, oh, let's do them downstream here. And I'm going to click here and here. And as I raise up, you can see it's a right angle. Let me do some undos. And let's go down into ramp. And I'll create another node, and you can see it looks like that. And we'll get undoes to get out of that. Automatic says, you know, I don't care what you want, but it's going to be based on the immediate item to the left of me. So if that happens to be a jump, you're going to get a jump when you do the next one. If it's a ramp, you're going to get a ramp. This also has a nice little feature here, and that process tempo. And this is basically based on your locators. So let me go out of this, and uh, let's set some locators. I'm going to select this event here, and letter P to set my locators to that event. Let's go back in here. A typical application might be working with film. So I've got it set on time code, although you've got a lot of choices here with your pop-up menu. And you can see our start and end points. And the, here's your uh, beats, bars and beats. Here's your time. And it's saying, well, you know, what do we want to do with this? I'm going to say I really need this just to be seven seconds long. So I've got to get rid of those nine frames. And there's a couple of ways I could do this. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and type in information. I'm going to go 0 .0 0 0.0.07. Hit return. And you can see what used to be 1809 is 1729. So it's changed. And if I go ahead and process, you're going to see a little hiccup over here. So let's go ahead and click process. And you can see we've got a tempo change. Now, notice our locators didn't change. This didn't change because it's based on our locator information not on the tempo. So let's go ahead and close, get out of that. And let's open up this very powerful track editor, tempo track editor. You've got a lot of items running across here, most you're familiar with. You've got a look, uh, as I move my arrow tool around, it's going to give me an update here. You know, if you have snap on, when you try to draw things, it'll snap to whatever your uh, drop down menu here is. Uh, you can see the existing tempo where we're at right now. So let's go ahead and just play around with a few things of here. With snap on, and I try to draw something. It's very staircased. If I take snap off, try to draw something that's much smoother. We've seen this in all the automation information that we've done in previous videos. And you can see the inspector goes crazy with all the information. 
You can do an insert curve. It's the same process as what we saw over there before, earlier in this video. So let's do some undos on this and get out of this before we have too much crazy stuff. But basically, this is the way you can modify your project with tempos. Let's go ahead and close this out. And a caveat, if you've already recorded audio, probably going to have to go in and audio warp it. And there's videos on that as well. Otherwise, you're going to have some problems. If you haven't recorded audio yet, you're in great shape. And MIDI, of course, will follow these tempo changes anyway. Lastly, I want to talk very briefly about the time warp tool. When we select the time warp tool, you can see our bar ruler changes and we get some information here. And actually, I'm going to add one other tempo element about right here for our demonstration. Yes, we do have it there. Okay, so let me go ahead and grab a time warp. And by the way, you've got a choice of warp grid and a warp grid musical events follow. Typically, you'd use this feature here, this function here, and that's what we're going to demonstrate right now. So I've got this, and I could better zoom in a little bit, actually make this a little easier to see. So I want to say I want to move the beginning of this region Actually, I want bar 35. I'm actually changing the tempo to slave to our region here. I'm going to go ahead and move bar 35 over right here. Now, our tempo is at 100. Let me zoom out once here anyway. And uh, uh, let's see if we'll get it. And now that I've uh, out of this tool, of course, I've lost my... T here we go. So that changed. This was 100. In fact, let me do an undo here. And let me do a redo. And you can see it's 105 now to accommodate the compression we basically had to create. So holding on the shift key, by the way, gives me the eraser tool. And I could delete this if I wanted to. We can bring it back. And if you hold down the option or alt key, depending on your platform, you can move these tempo markers around. You can see things changing here as we do that. So that's a basic little how do you do to the Time Warp tool. Hope you get some tips and tricks out of this one. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.